Bismillahirrahmanirrahim sallallahu alayhi sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah everyone it's so lovely to be together for another Friday gems um in this beautiful month of Shaban um we have a great program for you with Sheikh Yasser Fahmi today I'm, I'm really excited um and excited to be with you all again for another Friday gems um just a reminder we are live now um so this live now flyer is posted on our twitter our facebook and our instagram so you can go to any of those places and share it with your friends and uh, get a little bit more baraka in your friday inshallah um so again this this flyer and you can see we have a beautiful program with sheikh yasser um called beware of yourself individuality versus community uh, i i've <laughs> been looking forward to it all day so i'm excited to get to experience it with all of you inshallah um so with that we'll get in um to the program. Um, this Friday Gems is brought to you by Celebrate Mercy. And if you uh, don't know who we are, what we do, um, we are a nonprofit organization that teaches about the life and the character of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through our words and through our actions. Um, so there are different avenues uh, through which we do that. And you can see some of them here. SubhanAllah. Um, so we've been, been doing this now for about 11 years. And you can see some of our previous work. Um, we've really tried to mobilize our community um, to to address hatred and, and violence in the world, and, and to you know come together and, and to do good. Um, so you can see some of that here. And mashallah, we've we've been able to do that very successfully, uh, thanks to all of you guys, and got some some pretty significant uh, media attention for that work as well. Subhanallah. So you can see those campaigns here, and then. Um, Back before uh, we, we were mostly online because of the pandemic, we had uh, beautiful, beautiful in-person programs, um, weekends with, with scholars and mashallah, um, rooms full of people gathered to learn together. Uh, so beautiful to see. And inshallah, again, one day we, we will be doing uh, similar things. Um, so that's some of that. And then since COVID, we've had our weekly Friday Gems webinars. Um, and so I know some of you have been with us through the whole the whole way. Uh, those weekly Friday gyms webinars, mashallah, and, and some some really lovely speakers. And then also we've had several virtual conferences um, to respond to things that are happening or to mark um, significant times in, in the Islamic calendar. So you can see some of those, um, some of those programs here, subhanAllah. And we've also had uh, several online courses um, with with uh, where we come together to learn, uh, Subhanallah, it's, it's always really beautiful to be together and to learn from such beautiful scholars. This is one of our most recent programs, our children's Shema'il series, um, Inshallah. So you can see um, some like since COVID, wow, Mashallah, like <laughs> it blows me away every time. I've I've seen this so many times, and it's still just like uh, it just makes me so grateful for for the amount of work we've been able to do uh, since March 2020. 800 hours of new content. Um, uh, 200,000 hours of video content viewed and I always love when Tariq's on the program and can tell you just how long you'd have to sit on the couch um I think it's a, a number of years like maybe 24 years you'd have to sit in front of the couch to watch <laughs> all of the programming subhanallah um and that's all thanks to you guys and um being a part of the community coming and and um being in the program uh, being a part of these programs with us and then also th uh, sustaining this work through your donations so if you'd like to continue to sustain um our program, our community. Um, well, you've done step one, you're here, subhanAllah. Um, now the, the other part is going to celebratemercy.com slash donate and, and just giving anything you can to, to make what we do possible, um, inshallah. So again, that link is celebratemercy.com slash donate. You can give one time or we also have a monthly donation system, um, subhanAllah. So you can check that out. Um, and, and also, you know, be a part of some of our recent things that are happening. You know, our, we just finished the Black Lives on the Messenger course again, um, subhanAllah. So so you can um, be involved in the community in that way. If Friday Gems is, is beautiful, and if you want a little bit more, celebrate mercy in your life in this beautiful programming, you can check that out at celebratemercy.com slash BL. And, and um, inshallah, um, watch those recordings of the program. Um, I also want to make sure you guys don't miss the opportunity to uh, to enter our Friday giveaway. Uh, we're giving away Mecca to Medina, a photographic journey of the Hijra route. Um, the deadline is at 5 p.m., so there's still a good hour and a half or so that you can that you can um, enter to win this beautiful book. Um, you can enter at celebratemercy.com/giveaway. Um, another thing you can do 
is um, go to our Instagram and, and check out the post with this with this um, the giveaway and, and see more about how to enter there. Um, so don't make sure not to miss that. <laughs> Inshallah. Um, again, the deadline's at 5 p.m. So with that, we'll start moving um, towards our recitation, inshallah. Um, and yeah, just just a little bit about why uh, we recite uh, Surat Al-Kaf on Fridays. Um, the, messenger, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, um, said, For the person who recites Surat Al-Kaf on Fridays, a light will appear for him from below the throne as high as the skies. The light will help him in the darkness of the day of resurrection. And all the sins which he may have committed from the last Friday till this Friday, will be forgiven. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. It's, uh, it's so lovely to get to be together on, on this Yom al-Jum'ah to recite Surat al-Kaf um, together and, and, to, and to be together to learn and to, and to experience this tremendous blessing um, that Surat al-Kaf brings on Fridays. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. And um, just one more reminder, as we love to say at, at Celebrate Mercy, sharing is khairing. Um, so, just another reminder, we have our Live Now flyer on our Twitter, on our Facebook, and on our Instagram. Um, and we we just love having you here. So the more people you can bring, <laughs> um, it, the, the better the gathering is, subhanAllah. Um, and and uh, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says, He who directs others to a good deed, as is the one who did it. So, inshallah, let's say, you know, you invite... Um, 10 friends, you know, you maybe just text them and say, hey, there's a, a great a program from Celebrate Mercy going on. Come, come, like, join with me, celebratemercy.com slash Friday. Um, you get the reward of having watched the program 10 times, subhanAllah. Um, or, or maybe you just share it on your, on your Twitter, your Instagram, um, or your Facebook, and, and you never know who's going to check this program out because of, of what you did. Um, so, inshallah, um, be sure to share it. It's this this live now flyer um and as you and <laughs> as i've said before i'm really excited about this program today um so share it with all your friends i'll share it with all of my friends and inshallah we'll have a beautiful gathering of of learning inshallah um and next we'll bring up sheikh yasser um i'm not seeing him backstage i might just take a moment to to see to see if he's he's getting on okay um so oh, if you'll just give me just a, just a moment, I, I I'm really excited for the program today, and uh, for his recitation, inshallah. Okay. Um, while while we uh, I think uh, he'll be joining us shortly, inshallah. Um, but one of the things that we skip today that I usually love I love when we do together is is just seeing where everybody's from, uh, joining in from, and <laughs> it's subhanallah. It's it's um it's crazy how we cover the the world <laughs> with our with our audience. So oh wow, subhanallah, we have someone here from the Netherlands. Wow, so, assalamu alaikum to you, Juma Mubarak. Um, lovely to have you with us uh, all the way from the Netherlands. Wow. Um, then we have Troy, Troy, Michigan. Subhanallah. Assalamu alaikum. This is lovely. If you, if you want to drop in the chat where you're joining us from, um, we'll see how many how many locales we can we can get. <laughs> so we have we have a good. Uh, I'm seeing a good East Coast representation. We have Warwick, New York. Assalamu alaikum, uh, sister joining from Warwick, New York. Subhanallah. And then New Jersey. So the East Coast has shown up. So if, if you're here from California, if you're here from South America, oh, the UK, oh, salam alaikum to, to, um, to, um, for, to the UK, to the whole UK. <laughs> subhanallah, subhanallah. More, more East Coasters, Maryland. Um, I'm seeing, I'm seeing New Jersey. Okay, okay, we're starting to get a little westward. We have Texas. Um, salam to you in Texas. Um, oh, sorry, <laughs> I keep accidentally clicking the comment off the screen. But um, assalamu alaikum to anybody joining in Texas. Oh wow, subhanallah, you got um, someone here from the UAE. Assalamu alaikum to you, Jumu Mubarak. Um, wow, this is this is hands down one of my favorite things. It's just so cool to see <laughs> where everyone's from. And assalamu alaikum to Khadija in in Nashville. Oh wow! Okay, uh, someone is coming from from Bridgewater, New Jersey, home of FLS Center, um, which 
see <laughs> which is Sheikh Yasser's um masjid, subhanallah, subhanallah. Um and it looks like uh the man himself uh, is is now joining us, uh Sheikh Yasser. Um it, are you ready to, to come on screen? Okay, subhanallah, I'll bring you on. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. And I just realized too, I forgot to introduce you. Is it okay if I no, you, you don't even have to introduce me, just Oh, I can't hear you. Uh sorry, you cannot so hear this me. This might be a good way yeah, I can't yeah. Um, well, I'm going to I'm going to give you a moment to maybe figure out the microphone situation and then we'll I'll, while I, I actually, introduce you is that okay? I don't think the problem's on my side. I'm good. Or maybe it's maybe it's on my end the issue. Can can you guys hear Sheikh Yasser? All right. That's a, this this <laughs> way I'm going to introduce me. I'm going to introduce myself Xavier so we can start inshallah. <laughs> people people know where to follow on prophetic living. Can anybody in the audience hear Sheikh? That's all we need. To, oh, okay. All, all they need. It looks like it looks like it's a me problem. <laughs> okay. Then, then, well, then we're good. Bismillah. I'm gonna start. Uh, with kef and they'll let you know that everything is good. We're we're good. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna okay. Start. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give this stage to you, Sheikh. Yes, sir. Thank you for your patience. Lovely to see you. Alhamdulillah. Wa 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 I apologize if I'm a few minutes late. I. Uh, I was struggling with a little technical challenges, but I'm here. Barakallahu feekum. So alhamdulillah, as always, we're blessed to be together on this uh, special platform, Celebrate Mercy, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to celebrate our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah wa shukrulillah for that. And alhamdulillah, we are going to be reciting Surah Al-Kahf with the intention and the hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bestow his light upon us, that he will affirm for us a beautiful light between this week and next week, that we will be liberated and protected from the fitan, from the trials and the tribulations. And that we all receive the beautiful bounties and benefits of reciting this chapter together in congregation, in community. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Bismillah. A'udhu billahi s-sami'i l-alimi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahi r-rahmani r-rahim. Alhamdulillahi al-ladhi anzala ala abidihi al-kitab wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja. قيما لينذر بأسا شديدا من لدنه ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا حسنا ما كثين فيه أبدا وينذر الذين قالوا اتخذ الله ولدا ما لهم به من علم ولا لآبائهم كبرت كلمة تخرج من أفواههم إن يقولون إلا كذبا فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعٌ نَفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ إِنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ أَسَفًا إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا مَا عَلَى الْأَرْضِ زِينَةً لَهَا لِنَبْلُوَهُمْ أَيُّهُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا وَإِنَّا لَجَاعِلُونَ مَا عَلَيْهَا صَعِيدًا جُرُزًا أَمْ حَسِبْتَ أَنَّ أَصْحَابَ الْكَهْفِ وَالرَّقِيمِ كَانُوا مِنْ آيَاتِنَا عَجَبًا إذ أوى الفتية إلى الكهف فقالوا ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا فضربنا على آذانهم في الكهف سنين عددا ثم بعثناهم لنعلم أي الحزبين أحصى لما لبثوا أمدا نحن نقص عليك نبأهم بالحق إنهم فتية آمنوا بربهم وزدناهم هدى وربطنا على قلوبهم إذ قاموا فقالوا ربنا رب السماوات والأرض لن ندعو من دونه إله لقد قلنا إذا شططا هؤلاء قوم اتخذوا من دونه آلهة لولا يأتون عليهم بسلطان بين فمن أظلم ممن افترى على الله كذبا وإذ اعتزلتموهم وما يعبدون إلا الله فأو إلى الكهف ينشر لكم ربكم من رحمته ويهيئ لكم من أمركم مرفقا وترى الشمس إذا طلعت تزاور عن كهفهم ذات اليمين وإذا غربت تقرضهم ذات الشمال وهم في فجوة منه ذلك من آيات الله من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا 
وتحسبهم أيقاظا وهم رقود ونقلبهم ذات اليمين وذات الشمال وكلبهم باسط ذراعيه بالوصيد لو اطلعت عليهم لوليت منهم فرارا ولملئت منهم رعبا وكذلك بعثناهم ليتساءلوا بينهم قال قائل منهم كم لبثتم قالوا لبثنا يوما أو بعض يوم قالوا ربكم أعلم بما لبثتم فبعثوا أحدكم بورقكم هذه إلى المدينة فلينظر أيها أزكى طعاما فليأتكم برزق منه وليتلطف ولا يشعرن بكم أحدا إنهم إن يظهروا عليكم يرجموكم أو يعيدوكم في ملتهم ولن تفلحوا إذا أبدا وكذلك أعثرنا عليهم ليعلموا أن وعد الله حق وأن الساعة لا ريب فيها إذ يتنازعون بينهم أمرهم فقالوا ابنوا عليهم بنيانا ربهم أعلم بهم قال الذين غلبوا على أمرهم قال الذين غلبوا على أمرهم لنتخذن عليهم مسجدا سيقولون ثلاثة رابعهم كلبهم ويقولون خمسة سادسهم كلبهم رجما بالغيب ويقولون سبعة وثامنهم كلبهم قل ربي أعلم بعدتهم ما يعلمهم إلا قليل فلا تمار فيهم إلا مراء ظاهرا ولا تستفت منهم, منهم أحدا ولا تقولن لشيء إني فاعل ذلك غدا إلا أن يشاء الله واذكر ربك إذا نسيت وقل عسى أن يهديني ربي لأقرب من هذا رشدا ولبثوا في كهفهم ثلاثمية سنين وازدادوا تسعا قل الله أعلم بما لبثوا له غيب السماوات والأرض أبصر به وأسمع ما لهم من دونه من ولي ولا يشرك في حكمه أحدا واتل ما أوحي إليك من كتاب ربك لا مبدل لكلماته ولن تجد من دونه ملتحدا واصبر نفسك مع الذين يدعون ربهم بالغداة والعشي يريدون وجهه ولا تعد عيناك عنهم تريد زينة الحياة الدنيا ولا تطع من أغفلنا قلبه عن ذكرنا واتبع هواه وكان أمره فرطا وقل الحق من ربكم فمن شاء فليؤمن ومن شاء فليكفر إنا أعتدنا للظالمين نارا أحاط بهم سرادقها وإن يستغيثوا يغاثوا بماء كالمهل يشوي الوجوه بئس الشراب وساءت مرتفقا إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات إنا لا نضيع أجر من أحسن عملا أولئك لهم جنات عدن تجري من تحتهم الأنهار يحلون فيها من أساور من ذهب ويلبسون ثيابا خضرا خضرا من سندس واستبرق متكئين فيها على الأرائك نعم الثواب وحسنة مرتفقا واضرب لهم مثلا رجلين جعلنا لأحدهما جنتين من أعناب وحففناهما بنقل وجعلنا بينهما زرعا كلتا الجنتين آتت أكلها ولم تظلم منه شيئا وفجرنا خلالهما نهرا وكان له ثمر فقال لصاحبه وهو يحاوره أنا أكثر منك مالا وأعز نفرا ودخل جنته وهو ظالم لنفسه قال ما أظن أن تبيد هذه أبدا وما أظن الساعة قائمة ولئن رددت إلى ربي 
لا جدنا خيرا منها منقلبا قال له صاحبه وهو يحاوره أكفرت بالذي خلقك من تراب ثم من نطفه ثم سواك رجلا لكن هو الله ربي ولا أشرك بربي أحدا ولولا إذ دخلت جنتك قلت ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله إن ترني أنا أقل منك مالا وولدا فعسى ربي أن يؤتيني خيرا من جنتك ويرسل عليها حسبانا من السماء فتصبح صعيدا زلقا أو يصبح ماؤها أو يصبح ماؤها غورا فلن تستطيع له طلبا وأحيط بثمره فأصبح يقلب كفيه على ما أنفق فيها وهي خاوية وهي خاوية على عروشها ويقول يا ليتني لم أشرك بربي أحدا ولم تكن له فئة ينصرونه من دون الله وما كان منتصرا هنالك الولاية لله الحق هو خير ثوابا وخير عقبا واضرب لهم, واضرب لهم مثل الحياة الدنيا كما إن أنزلناه من السماء فاختلط به نبات الأرض فأصبح هشيما تذروه الرياح وكان الله على كل شيء مقتدرا المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا والباقيات الصالحات خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير أملا ويوم نسير الجبال و... ويوم نسير الجبال وترى الأرض بارزة وحشرناهم فلم نغادر منهم أحدا وعرضوا على ربك صفا لقد جئتمونا كما خلقناكم أول مرة بل زعمتم أن لن نجعل لكم موعدا ووضع الكتاب فترى المجرمين مشفقين مما فيه ويقولون يا ويلتنا ما لهذا الكتاب لا يغادر لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا أحصاها ووجدوا ما عملوا حاضرا ولا يظلم ربك أحدا وإذ قلنا للملائكة اسجدوا لآدم فسجدوا إلا إبليس كان من الجن ففسق عن أمر ربه أفتتخذونه وذريته أولياء من دوني وهم لكم عدو بئس للظالمين بدلا ما أشهدتهم خلق السماوات والأرض ولا خلق أنفسهم وما كنت متخذ المضلين عضدا ويوم يقول نادوا شركائي الذين زعمتم فدعوهم فلم يستجيبوا لهم فدعوهم فلم يستجيبوا لهم وجعلنا بينهم موبقا ورأى المجرمون النار فظنوا أنهم مواقعها ولم يجدوا عنها مصرفا ولقد صرفنا في هذا القرآن للناس من كل مثل وكان الإنسان أكثر شيء جدلا وما منع الناس أن يؤمنوا إذ جاءهم الهدى ويستغفروا ربهم إلا أن تأتيهم سنة الأولين أو يأتيهم العذاب قبلا وما نرسل المرسلين إلا مبشرين ومنذرين ويجادل الذين كفروا بالباطل ليضحضوا به الحق واتخذوا آياتي وما أنذروا هزوا ومن أظلم ممن ذكر بآيات ربه فأعرض عنها ونسي ما قدمت يداه إنا جعلنا على قلوبهم أكنة أن يفقهوه وفي آذانهم وقرا وإن تدعوهم إلى الهدى فلن يهتدوا إذا أبدا وربك الغفور ذو الرحمة 
لو يؤاخذهم بما كسبوا لعجل لهم العذاب بل لهم موعد لن يجدوا من دونه موئلا وتلك القرى أهلكناهم لما ظلموا وجعلنا لمهلكهم موعدا وإذ قال موسى لفتاه لا أبرح حتى أبلغ مجمع البحرين أو أمضي حقبا فلما بلغ مجمع بينهما نسيا حوتهما فاتخذ سبيله في البحر سربا فلما جاوزا قال لفتاه آتنا غدا أنا لقد لقينا من سفرنا هذا نصبا قال أرأيت إذ أوينا إلى الصخرة فإني نسيت الحوت وما أنسانيه إلا الشيطان أن أذكره واتخذ سبيله في البحر عجبا قال ذلك ما كنا نبغ فارتدى على آثارهما قصصا فوجد عبدا من عبادنا آتيناه رحمة من عندنا وعلمناه من لدنا علما قال له موسى هل أتبعك على أن تعلمني مما علمت رشدا قال إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا وكيف تصبر على ما لم تحط به خبرا قال ستجدني إن شاء الله صابرا ولا أعصي لك أمرا قال فإن اتبعتني فلا تسألني عن شيء حتى أحدث لك منه ذكرا فانطلقا حتى إذا ركبا في السفينة خرقها قال أخرقتها لتغرق أهلها لقد جئت شيئا إمرا قال ألم أقل إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا قال لا تؤاخذني بما نسيت ولا ترهقني من أمري عسرا فانطلقا حتى إذا لقي غلاما فقتله قال قتلت نفسا زكية بغير نفس لقد جئت شيئا نكرا قال ألم أقل لك إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا قال إن سألتك عن شيء بعدها فلا تصاحبني قد بلغت من لدني عذرا فانطلقا حتى إذا أتيا أهل قرية استطعما أهلها فأبوا أن يضيفوهما فوجدا فيها جدارا يريد أن ينقض فأقامه قال لو شئت لاتقذت عليه أجرا قال هذا فراق بيني وبينك سأنبئك بتأويل ما لم تستطع عليه صبرا أما السفينة فكانت لمساكين يعملون في البحر فأردت أن أعيبها وكان وراءهم ملك يأخذ كل سفينة غصبا وأما الغلام فكان أبواه مؤمنين فخشينا أن يرهقهما طغيانا وكفرا فأردنا أن يبدلهما ربهما خيرا منه زكاة وأقرب رحما وأما الجدار فكان لغلامين يتيمين في المدينة وكان تحته كنز لهما وكان أبوهما صالحا فأراد ربك أن يبلغا أشد أشدهما ويستخرجا كنزهما رحمة من ربك وما فعلته عن أمري ذلك تأويل ما لم تستطع عليه صبرا ويسألونك عن ذي القرنين قل سأتلو عليكم منه ذكرا إنا مكنا له في الأرض وآتيناه من كل شيء سببا فأتبع سببا حتى إذا بلغ مغرب الشمس وجدها تغرب في عين حمئة ووجد عندها قوما قلنا يا ذا القرنين إما أن تعذب وإما أن تتخذ فيهم حسنا قال أما من ظلم فسوف نعذبه ثم يرد إلى ربه فيعذبه عذابا نكرا وأما من آمن وعمل صالحا فله جزاء الحسنى وسنقول له من أمرنا يسرا ثم أتبع سببا حتى إذا بلغ مطلع الشمس 
مطلع مطلع الشمس وجدها تطلع على قوم لم نجعل لهم من دونها سترا كذلك وقد أحطنا بما لديه خبرا ثم أتبع سببا حتى إذا بلغ بين السدين وجد من دونهما قوما لا يكادون يفقهون قولا قالوا يا ذا القرنين إن يأجوج ومأجوج مفسدون في الأرض فهل نجعل لك خرجا على أن تجعل بيننا وبينهم سدا قال ما مكنني فيه ربي خير فعينوني بقوة أجعل بينكم وبينهم رذما أتوني زبر الحديد حتى إذا ساوى بين الصدفين قال انفخوا حتى إذا جعله نارا قال آتوني أفرغ عليه قطرا فما استطاعوا أن يظهروه وما استطاعوا له نقبا قال هذا رحمة من ربي فإذا جاء وعد ربي جعله دكا وكان وعد ربي حقا وتركنا بعضهم يومئذ يموج في بعض ونفخ في الصور فجمعناهم جمعا وعرضنا جهنم يومئذ للكافرين عرضا الذين كانت أعينهم في غطاء عن ذكري وكانوا لا يستطيعون سمعا أفحسب الذين كفروا أن يتخذوا عبادي من دوني أولياء إنا أعتدنا, ج... إنا أعتدنا جهنم للكافرين نزلا قل هل ننبئكم بالأخسرين أعمالا الذين ضل سعيهم في الحياة الدنيا وهم يحسبون أنهم يحسنون صنعا أولئك الذين كفروا بآيات ربهم ولقائه فحبطت أعمالهم فلا نقيم لهم يوم القيامة وزنا ذلك جزاؤهم جهنم بما كفروا واتخذوا آياتي ورسلي هزوا إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات كانت لهم جنات الفردوس نزلا قالدين فيها لا يبغون عنها حولا قل لو كان البحر مدادا لكلمات ربي لنفذ البحر قبل أن تنفذ كلمات ربي ولو جئنا بمثله مددا قل إنما أنا بشر مثلكم يوحى إلي أنما إلهكم إله واحد فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا صدق الله العظيم وبه نستعين May Allah accept from us this recitation and may he make it in our scale of good deeds and may he grant us all of its blessings. Allahumma amin. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh, um, for a beautiful recitation. Um, <laughs> I'm glad I got to hear it. With I was having some sound issues, so Jazakallah khair to everyone who was helping in the comments. <laughs> you guys are so so wonderful, um, and it was such a blessing to you know be in confusion, not be able to hear anything, and then boom, Quran like in the in my ears. It was lovely. Um, oh, such a moving recitation, and I'm um, uh, so grateful to have got to hear it. Uh, Subhanallah. So. I've seen the numbers of people we have with us steadily grow and grow and grow since the program started. SubhanAllah, it's lovely to have you all here. Welcome. Assalamu alaikum, Juma Mubarak, um, to Friday Gems. Um, just a reminder for those of you who are joining us on YouTube, be sure to like. Um, when you like the video, it, get re it gets recommended to, to more people. So, you know, I always say there's a little bit of barakah in the like button. You can, uh, you know, with the intention of spreading uh, this video to more people, hit the like button and then. I, I always also say that we love having you with us. So subscribe so you never miss us and we never miss you. Um, and, and be sure to do the notification bell with us that, so that anytime we have a live program, class, anything, that you're here with us, inshallah. Um, and again, sharing is khairing. Uh, we have our live now flyer posted on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all the sites. Um, 
and and you can share this program and get even more blessings into your Friday by by spreading the word about this program and bringing more people here to to enjoy it uh, with us. You know, inshallah, we have uh, about 170 devices connected at this time. So um, I'd love to see we're we're getting into now the uh, the re uh, reflections and the khutbah. If we can maybe get to 200 devices or more, that'd be lovely. Uh, so be sure to share this, um, and you can always refer people to celebratemercy.com/friday. Um, and and or or share out the live now flyer which um is on our our social media so we're about to move into the into the reflections and then we'll have the khutbah and q a inshallah um and then we will then move to clubhouse together so so you guys can come on mic and and ask sheikh yes or some of your questions um before before we move on with with more announcements, I just want to ask you all to join us um, in making dua for for the mother of one of our beloved team members. Um, her 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 mother passed away two weeks ago now, and um, and uh, so if you could make dua for Aisel Rabia Key Lynch, uh, and and may Allah grant her Janatul Firdaus and and make this time easy for her family. Inshallah, um, Inshallah, we'll we'll make dua again with Sheikh Yasser uh, after the khutbah um, for for uh, Sister Aisa. And um, we also are are um, you can pledge to recite Quran for for Sister Isa um, at bit.ly slash Quran for Isa inshallah. Um, so there's the link for that, and, and we can read Quran for her and and keep her family and keep her in our dua inshallah. Um, and then just a few more um, announcements before we get on to the reflections. Um, so the these uh, the, these programs are are brought to you by the by the celebrate mercy community which includes all of you um and and you have the opportunity to sponsor a friday gems program um we include a dua in the program for you um you could and and um so if you're interested in doing that you can email us at info at celebrate mercy.com um info at celebrate mercy.com inshallah um, another announcement: We are hiring. So, if you're interested in in working for Celebrate Mercy, um, or interested in in seeing what kind of positions we have available, you can visit celebratemercy.com/careers. Um, and then, one more reminder: I don't want you guys to miss it. this book. Looks, mashallah, so beautiful. Um, and and you can enter to win it. Um, it, by I think there's a little less than an hour left, but that's still plenty of time. Um, I think the entry process takes like two minutes, if that. Um, so, so you can enter to win this beautiful, beautiful book at celebratemercy.com slash giveaway. Um, or you can f find our post on Instagram about it and, and there are directions there. Um, it, it, it doesn't take long to enter and, and <laughs> subhanAllah, it's such a beautiful book. So inshallah, one of you will be winning it. Um, and one more announcement. Um, I, and I always think this um, is beautiful coming from the recitation and just hearing that that glowing recitation of the Quran, um, the, our partnership with Fawake, they uh, get, are so generous in giving our audience, viewers of our webinars, um, a really, really generous discount for a 15 month um, long Quranic Arabic journey. So if you're listening to that recitation, you're thinking, I would really love to understand the Quran better. Um, they have different levels of Arabic. Um, and you can check out more about the program at fuwake.org slash cmercy and, and you can get that discount. It's 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 almost a thousand dollar discount by using the code cmercy35. Um, so be sure to check that out, inshallah. And with that, we will move to the reflection portion of the program, inshallah, um, with Sheikh Yasser. And I will introduce him um, before bringing him back on stage, inshallah. Sheikh Yasser Fatmi graduated from Rutgers Business School. After working for a number of years in finance, he then moved to Egypt, where he studied for eight years at Al-Azhar University. In his time at Al-Azhar, he attained numerous Ijazat um, independent certifications and studied under many notable teachers, including Sheikh Ahmed Taha Rayyan. Um, may Allah have mercy on him. In 2013, Sheikh Yasser Fahmi became the first American Azhari to teach at the renowned Al-Azhar Mosque. Currently, Sheikh Yasser is the Muslim instructor at, the, at Harvard Divinity School as well as the founder of the Prophetic Living Initiative. Sheikh Yasser also acts as the religious advisor for Al-Falah Center. So with that, I will bring Sheikh Yasser to stage again. Assalamu alaikum. alaykum. Wa how are you, Xavier? Good to you. Doing well, alhamdulillah. It's nice to hear your voice. Yeah, <laughs> it's I'm, nice I'm, to see I'm, you. I'm happy you can hear mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll leave the stage to you, Sheikh. Alhamdulillah. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu wa rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. 
Um, so alhamdulillah, um, <clears throat> as uh, over the past many, 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 many weeks of reciting Surah Al-Kahf together on this platform, mashallah, since COVID kind of hit and, you know, this, re this weekly recitation of Surah Al-Kahf as you've all heard multiple times in the reminders, is fundamentally about protection, about our individual protection from the trials and the tribulations of our time. And that's something that I just wanted to take a step back and look at, um, because there's certainly obvious evident benefits to reciting Surah Al-Kahf, but I want us to make sure that we fully appreciate what this means. What does it mean that Allah is saying that this surah protects you from the trials and the tribulations of your time? What that requires is that you and I actually affirm and recognize that there are trials and tribulations, that there are genuine uh, challenges that may come about as just a function of living in space and time. And I, I think sometimes we can get so caught up in um, the day-to-day -day, uh, machinations of life and that we actually lose track of the fact that there is a fitna, that there are serious uh, tribulations and challenges and struggles that are working against us, if you will, that there are um, ideas, philosophies, perspectives, orientations, um, considerations that are out there, pathways that are out there that, that can easily find its way into a person's purview, into a person's uh, beyond just their purview, but a person's be belief system, their theology, their um, way of thinking. And being mindful of the fact that fitan exists should result in a type of vigilance and scrupulousness, awareness. Um, and I think that because of the fact that we may theoretically conceive of the existence of Fitan, trials, tribulations, difficulty, struggles, alternate kind of um, belief systems, etc. We believe in it theoretically or we conceive of it theoretically, but we don't actually maybe at times experience it or internalize it as a, you know, a, a very present thing. And so because of and so therefore the lack of that um, awareness or being present with the fact that fitan exists may not lead us to be so vigilant and so aware, and so careful. And I think the fact that Prophet, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us Surah Al-Kahf, and the Prophet teaches us and guides us to recite it every week, every Friday, we're meant to recite Surah Al-Kahf, is a, a recognition of the following, that fitan, right, um, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, in Surah, he says in the Quran, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسِ أَنْ يُتْرَقُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا أَمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ you know, people think I will, that, that you will say, I believe, and they will not be tested and tried on that. You know, Allah, you know, Allah created death and life to test and to assess who of amongst us are the best in deeds and actions. So it's important to, to have a, um, a practical theology a functional um, awareness of the fact that tr tribulations exist all the time. And I must and you must be proactively aware of that and prepared for that. I think that's, you know, the, the, the biggest takeaway about why it is we recite at such repetition, a weekly basis, because you need to regularly protect yourself. You know, you, you know, for example, you know, they were saying that during COVID you should take vitamin C and vitamin D and these kind of things. Um, all of us agree that you can't just take vitamin C or vitamin D once and you're good. You have to take it on, on, on a repetitive cycle. Um, for it to protect you regularly, you have to take it regularly. The same thing with Surah Al-Kahf. Now, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a beautiful, sacred, um, uh, ritual of protection, which is reciting it, but deeper within it are the meanings. The, the meanings that within it you will find the the essence of that protection. You know, you find, for example, just as an example, Allah describes some of the fitan, some of the real fitan, some of the real trials that may overtake people. 
the fitna of your identity, your deen, your religious uh, orientation, the threat on your belief system, uh, the fact that people will be so antagonistic to the way you believe. And today, for example, we don't, it's obvious that it's not just the Islamophobes who don't like the value system of Islam. It's, there's many people on many spectrums who do not appreciate the theology, the spirituality, the sharia, uh, the law, um, the, 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 the religious edicts of Islam uh, from left to right. And so you will find that that is constantly threatened. Well, we have in the, so Allah's illustrating that with the story of the youth of the cave. And then he's also saying, well, there's a, there's a remedy to that. There's an antidote. And that's وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِي يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَةِ وَلَا تَعْدُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُمْ تُرِيدُ زِينَةَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا تُطِعْ مَنْ أَغْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِينَ وَتَبَعَهَ وَهُ كَانَ أَمْرُهُ فُرُطًا You know, well, if you want to really protect your, your identity, protect, uh, you know, uh, protect yourself, well, find righteous people and stick with them and, and, and be mindful of them and, and be patient with them. And don't even take your eyes off of them. And do not follow those. And don't follow those whose hearts are heedless of our remembrance. It's a very practical, direct uh, remedy to a particular fitna, a particular trial. Um, you read, uh, you know, in, 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 in the story of Sayyiduna Musa and Sayyiduna Khidr, you have uh, how Sayyiduna Musa and Sayyiduna Khidr are in this journey of kind of negotiating this 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 uh, this uh, uh, you know bond of, of of companionship on the journey of learning, and Sayyiduna uh, Musa you know is accompanying uh, Sayyiduna Al Khidr, and um, and you see that that the, the whole journey is a journey where Sayyiduna Musa is challenged um, by the actions of Sayyiduna Al Khidr, and and he's really struggling. He's really struggling to make sense and to theorize um, wh why it is what he's doing. And, and ultimately, you know, we see that this is reflective of the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will decree realities in this life. Plenty of circumstances that will play out in front of us that are far beyond our conception to fully comprehend. Or maybe we will not, or the wisdom of it may not be, you know, exposed to us. But the truth of it is not to be denied. Um, and, and the wisdom of it is not to be denied. And that's precisely what happens with Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Al-Khidr. Is that Sayyidina Al-Khidr does things that are, you know, in contradistinction to what Sayyidina Musa believes is, is good and, and okay. You know, like, you know, the, 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 what happened with the, the, the wall, what happened with the ship, etc. He did these things that was like so counterintuitive. Why are you doing these things? And, um, you know, Sayyiduna al-Khidr is telling him, well, you know, be patient, be patient, be patient. Sayyiduna Musa is, <laughs> you know, he's coming with this inquisitive nature because he has, you know, he's negotiating his ideas and his perspectives. Um, and, and ultimately, you know, Sayyiduna Musa it, it learns through, and we learn by extension of that, the significance of two things, of understanding that, number one, things are not always what they seem. Number two, that you, you won't always understand the wisdom of things. And the fact that there is a wisdom that exists. And for you to negotiate these truths, you're going to have to be very patient. And so an integral um, antidote to trials and tribulations and difficulties in the space of divine decree and divine legislation and the wisdom of it is that you're going to have to realize that you don't know. And there are truths that extend far beyond your, your simple purview. And that for you to really embrace that, you're going to have to be very patient. Well, be patient, patient. So you find you know, patience and embracing the fact that there is a wisdom that far supersedes your own subjective uh, conception of good and bad is, is an integral antidote. Because you, you, you wake up in a world like the one we in today, we're in today, you see so much happening. You see suffering, you see pain, you see struggle, you see, you know, confusion, you see social trends, and it all seems just so in much, so intense. Well, how do I conceive of this theologically and spiritual? I have to be patient. 
I have to realize that there's a wisdom beyond my simple ideas of what you know justice is or what mercy or is or what compassion is. I think a lot of us, we have this almost like a false compassion when it comes to things. We're like, oh, no, no, I want to be a loving, kind, caring person. Um, and so I just kind of want to accept things so that, you know, I don't hurt anyone's feelings. No, 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 no. This is not a question of hurting people's feelings or not. There's a truth. There's a, there's a, Allah is al-haq. He's the truth. And he reveals the truth. And that there is a divine wisdom behind the divine decree, right? He is al-hakam al-adl. He is the just ruler. And he is al-hakim, the all-wise. And he's al-alim, the all-knowing. So the story of Musa and Khidr teaches us that. And so, you know, the, 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 the net takeaway is the following, is that I want us to negotiate divine guidance. And in particular, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet said, guide us to, to study, read, and analyze, that we have to, we have to develop a far more um, stronger affinity and familiarity with this specific guidance. So Allah says, you know, we're taught by the Prophet that there are fitan. And Allah tells us explicitly that there are fitan. And that you have to be vigilant of those fitan. And be mindful of those fitan. And that you have to protect yourself from those fitan. That we have to embody that disposition. We can't just be kind of haphazard about our lives. You know, one of the most common lines I'll hear from people is, you know, I don't see what the big deal is. You know, what's the problem? Who cares what if people do that? Who cares if people do this? And I don't see a bail, you know, say la vie, you know, live and let live. And we say those things you know, with a type of carefree spirit as if we are above it. You know, people as if I'm above it. Well, don't be so uh, uptight. <laughs> you know, don't be so petty. Don't care so much. You know, just let things be. Let people do whatever they want to do. Um, I don't think that's a good philosophy of life. <laughs> and the reason I don't think that is because if it was such a meaningful philosophy of life, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have created us and just let it be. You know, hey guys, go out and do whatever you want. I created you, now just run free. Like, you know, beasts in the wild. No, that's not what he did. He sends us messengers. And over over, over many, many generations, he sends messenger after messenger after messenger, and he sends the final messenger. And then he sends the final book. And in this book and through this messenger, we have such beautiful explicit detail about how to think, how to use our minds, how to feel, how to use our hearts and our spirit, how to negotiate our nafs, how to, how to use our bodies, how to dress, how to talk, what to look at, what to eat, how to wash, how to walk, how to buy, how to sell, how to marry, how to divorce, who to marry. Very uh, explicit, beautiful, robust detail about what should be and what shouldn't be coming from al-haq so we don't so maybe yes in in a world in a episteme where it's basically have it your way all the time then yeah rules and regulations are meaningless and who cares really let people do whatever they want and let the you know <laughs> that's why people don't care anymore you know I'll let that whole part of the world just sink into oblivion who cares you know they're not like us, so who gives it? A'udhu billah. You know, and so, yeah, when, when you don't have, that's it, you're, you know, when there isn't a moral compass, when there aren't boundaries, when there isn't right and wrong, when there aren't the ideas of, like, you know, good and bad, and, and that there are boundaries, then then really who cares? And so we, unfortunately, because we have maybe perhaps adopted that disposition, we don't operate any longer with the fact that this world in by design is a place where there are trials and tribulations and you have to be vigilant. You can't be ghafid. You can't just be heedless. You can't walk mindlessly in life. You know, people will say to me all the time, like, Sheikh, I just don't care. You know, I don't care if people do that. I don't care if people do this. Like what difference does it make to me? All I care about is that I'm good. I have my paycheck. I have my home. I'm good. I have my relationships. I have my place where I can just enjoy myself. I don't care what anyone else does. Well, uh, let's just assess if that's prophetic or not. Let's let the, the Prophet said them dispo. We, alhamdulillah, through celebrate mercy, how many times before Allah has the shama'il been read, or how many times have we been through the seerah at a high level? 
You know, and you hear, is that how Prophet ﷺ lived his life? Did he just not care about people? Or do you read in Surah Al-Kahf, لَعَلَكَ بَاخِعُ النَّفْسَكَ Oh, Muhammad, as if you're going to kill yourself how much you love people and care about them. And you want guidance and goodness for them. You know, Prophet ﷺ was proactive. He wasn't passive. He wasn't pessimistic. He wasn't mindless. He wasn't heedless. You know, he wasn't apathetic. He wasn't jaded. Sallallahu alayhi wa He was none of it. He was none of these character traits. And unfortunately, a lot of us are adopting it. And that's why, you know, the discourse around fitna should compel us to be more careful. So, you know what? I'm going to be a lot more thoughtful about what I'm watching. Because there's a fitna out there. And I don't want, you know, these ideas to permeate my being. I need to be careful about the ideas that I have adopted standard in my life. My children, what are they consuming? What are they watching? What are they listening to? What are they seeing? What are they feeling? What are they experiencing? You know, what, what is their immersive type of reality? What are they saturated within, as Dr. Jackson would say, that would make it that that is more functional, that's, that's their functional philosophy than just some like, you know, here and there um, piecemeal ideas around Islam that really don't hold muster because it's just kind of like, I hear it in passing, khutbah here and there, or a lecture here and there, or, 30 second TikTok or I don't know what, you know, but rather than like a full on immerse, because what is our governing ideology? You know, and so yeah, when 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 there's no when there's when there's no governing morality, when there's no as you know, um, some philosopher would say a virtue ethic, then then you know what there is no fitna because who cares? You know what when you think of like today, when you open up media, what's the fitan? Like what are the fitan that people it's all about like, am I going to get hurt? But if over there they're getting hurt, who cares? But am I going to get hurt? Am I threatened? Like is my, oh, my fitna is the fact that gas prices have gone up for me, right? That's my fitna. Um, or the fact that, you know, uh, I may not be able to eat McDonald's. That's my fitna. Uh, you know, and, 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 and it's been, it's like a very self-centered, customized idea of what a fitna is, like a real trial and tribulation. But there, there, there are fitan, fitan of ideas, the spirit, fitna of people, the fitna of the Dajjal, the Antichrist, the fitna of the small Dajjal, the Dajjajila, the fitna of the Shaitan, the fitna of the Nafs, you know, the fitna of ideologies and isms and pers- those, these are all fitan. So it's not to mean, I'm not saying that we should live paranoid, it just means that we should live thoughtful, intentional, vigilant, aware. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is constantly speaking to us in the Quranic narrative around consciousness, being conscious. You know, people who think, reflect, contemplate, people who, who, who think with their innermost hearts. And the lub is the, the you know the heart of the heart of the heart. So you're you're someone who whose uh, whose mind pierces through. You don't you're not superficial. You're not superficial because Allah He equipped you with the capacity to think deep. And that, so you don't have to be superficial, meaning that you don't just look at this at a surface level and say, oh, I guess this is just a black object. No, you can, you can now have the capacity to look deeper and analyze and you can, and, and, and you can dissect and then you can research and understand that there's something deeper at play. Same thing goes with fitan. Don't just look at things, you know. Sometimes when, when people are listening, I'll hear this, people say this about shiuch. You know, I don't understand why the shiuch are so uptight. Like, it's not a big deal. It's just a song. It's just a movie. It, it's just a show. Um, it's just a clothes. Like, what's the big deal if, 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 if she dresses that way or if he does that or if he behaves that way or if he has this relationship or she does that? What's the big deal? What's the problem? See, that question, and people ask it as if they're above it. You know, they, they're as if they're above the fray. You know, I'm not petty the way... Uh, you know, you you religious folk are petty. I'm above it. I don't see what the big deal. Why are you so uptight? That that's that's not a virtuous disposition to maintain, and it's not such an obvious highfalutin, um, you know, uh, objectively uh, uh, scientific or moral disposition to hold. It's a very empty subjective disposition. You're asking that question is because you're ignorant, or I'm like the person who's asking, saying, I don't see what the big deal is. Now, if you're asking it to say, like, well, can I explore and understand perhaps maybe why this is important? That's a good disposition. But if it's like dismissive 
I don't see what the big deal is, then that's arrogant. It's ignorant arrogance or it's arrogant ignorance. It's not a sophisticated stance to hold, right? There's plenty of things that are absolutely critical and significant and, 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 and impact negatively and destructively in the social sphere, in ideas, philosophies, in movies and images, things that you may consume, right? Nothing, nothing, is, um, nothing is meaningless. Nothing is for naught. Nothing is frivolous. Everything does something. That's just the nature of, of our existence. Everything has an impact. You can easily become habituated into all sorts of dispositions. You can be habituated into detesting the, the smell of alcohol, and you can be habituated into loving consuming alcohol every single day. And that's why there's many people in the world today who say, like, I don't see any problem. Like, what's wrong with you people? Why are you so uptight? Like, not even a sip? Like people all the time will tell me this all the time. I'll be on a flight. I'll be in different places. Like not even like, what's the, what's the, it's, you never even tasted it. You were never even curious. No, I've never tasted it. Never curious of tasting it because I didn't let my mind go out. Vigilance, vigilance is critical. It keeps you, you know, thoughtful about what you're doing and why you're doing it. And as they say, and I'll, I'll close with this inshallah, you know, they say, what do they say? What's this common saying? Like, uh, you know, if, if, if you fail to plan, plan to fail, <laughs> you know, that's, if you if you if you fail to plan, plan to fail. Subhanallah. So let's plan the fact that a part of our identity is that there's a belief system and that we are created and that Allah created us to exist within this world, and that there are trials and tribulations. And 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 it's not just about say la vie, and it's not just about live and let live. No, there's things we have to be vigilant about, and there's right and wrong. And there's good and bad. And who's, you know, who who is benefiting and who who are the ideologues that are the you know behind the the, the the sheer force of cultural development that we see today through social media and through movies and you know what you see what the storylines that now have become so prominent in all these blockbuster movies. You know, who's driving these ideologies? Who's, pro who's propelling them into the hearts and minds of millions and millions of people across the world? They're, it's not all just, you know, innocent fun. It's not. It's not. You may think it is, but it's not innocent fun. My son may think all he wants that, you know, consuming candy is innocent fun. But I know and you know that he consumes so much candy, he's going to destroy his teeth, hurt his... Uh, you know, blood sugar do a lot of harm to himself. It's not just innocent fun. There's an objective point where you say, no, no, no. This is how you consume this. And this is the only good way to do that because outside of that, it's not good. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, you know, helps us to 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 internalize these truths. And, and I'll, I, I, you know, I just want to call your attention to verses 54 through 56 of Surah Al-Kahf. You can go back and read them in the context of what I just spoke about, what Allah is saying here, and indeed we have put forth every kind of example in this Qur'an for mankind, but man is ever more quarrelsome than anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the guidance, He gave us the direction, but what do we do? Jadal, we argue. This is from the beauty of Allah. Here, here it is. This is what you should follow. This is what you should believe. This is where right and wrong is. But where do we come in as modern people? No, no, no. Why? How come? Why not? Why, 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 why? We get this perpetual petty whiness. Whiny wise. <laughs> I go whiny wise. Why, 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 why? As if we're asking meaningful questions. But listen, Allah is the one who's guiding. Ask. Surrender to Allah. Humble yourself. The why question is indicates that somehow you know something. Like you're an arb, you're the one who's going to filter virtue. No, no, no. You're supposed to say what? What do you? That was the anthem of the prophets. I hear ya Allah and I obey. Hear and obey. That's what we are. Inshallah. Bi idnillah. May Allah make us so. Barakallahu fiikum. Azakum Allah khair. Wassalamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa akhir da'wan. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Yasser, for that stirring, uh, those stirring reflections, and, and uh, <laughs> certainly given us a lot to to think about. And, and um, yes, yeah, so <laughs> just so deep in thought, it's hard to even speak. Subhanallah. Um, but 
speak I must. Um, I'm going to make a few uh, short announcements and then we'll get into the khutbah, inshallah. Um, just a reminder for those of you who are joining us on YouTube, hit the like button. Um, it, that helps this video get recommended to people. Um, and we'd love to have as many people as possible um, here with us, inshallah. We've, we've uh, reached 200 devices connected, subhanAllah. Um, so lovely to have you all with us. And um, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell because we don't want to miss you. We don't want you to miss us. Every time we have a class, a webinar, anything that you, that you can join in, we want we want you here. We love having you here. So hit the make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that so that you know when we are live. Inshallah. Okay. Also, sharing is sharing. We uh, we still have a lot of program left. Subhanallah. Um, so be sure to this. The, our live now flyer is on our Twitter, our Facebook, our Instagram. Um, so share that and invite people to join and, and take um, take part of this beautiful gathering uh, with us. So this is the flyer, and as and so we've just finished the reflections on Surah Al Kaf. Um, now we'll go into the virtual khutbah in, in Q and A. Inshallah. And then after that, we will uh, move over to Clubhouse and have an extended discussion um, where where you all can come on on the microphone. And um, I also I always adore <laughs> that time with with you guys because we get to hear your voices and and um, it's just a, a reminder of what a beautiful community we have. Um, subhanallah, subhanallah. Um, and th that's all. That that's all created by you when you come and, and show up and be a part and say your salams in the chat, um, but also through how you su sustaining with your donations. So one way you can do that is to sponsor a Friday gems. Um, and you can, if you're interested in that, you can email info at celebrate mercy.com inshallah. Um, and then you can also give a one-time or monthly donation at celebrate mercy.com slash donate. This is all of the all of the work we've done since March of 2020, Subhanallah, with our small team, um, and that's all because of your sustaining donations and 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 because you are a part of our community. So again, celebratemercy.com/donate, uh, and then there are there's about 20 minutes left <laughs> to join the giveaway. Um, I'm I'm so stoked to, that that one of you will receive this beautiful book. So uh, be sure to go to celebratemercy.com/giveaway or check out our Instagram. It takes just uh, a matter of a, two minutes, maybe to to uh, uh, to enter the giveaway and and towards the end of the program inshallah we will draw the winner for the book inshallah so so be sure to enter enter to win this beautiful book um and then just a reminder before we before we get into it we'll have a q a session um after after the khutbah inshallah so you can post your questions in the comments or you can if you have a question that you'd prefer to stay anonymous for you can email info at celebrate .com. Um, and with that, we'll bring back Sheikh Yasser. I'll introduce him quickly and then bring um, him, to, him to the stage. Sheikh Yasser Fatmi graduated from Rutgers Business School. After working for a number of years in finance, he then moved to Egypt, where he studied for eight years at Al-Azhar University. In his time at Al-Azhar, he attained numerous ijazat, or independent certifications, and studied under many notable teachers, including Sheikh Ahmed Taha Rayan. In 2013, Sheikh Yasser Fatmi became the first American Azhari to teach in the renowned Al-Azhar Mosque. Currently, Sheikh Yasser is the Muslim instructor at Harvard Divinity School, as well as the founder of the Prophetic Living Initiative. Sheikh Yasser also acts as the religious advisor for our Falah Center. So with that, um, I'll bring Sheikh Yasser back to stage. Assalamu alaikum. Turn it over to you, Sheikh. Jazakallah. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa wa ba'd. Um... So inshallah, I wanted in this uh, Friday uh, reminder to share some thoughts around um, one of the developments that we're seeing in the modern world that, uh, you know, hopefully in the language of what we we're talking about in the Friday, in the Kaf reminder about just vigilance and awareness. You know, inshallah, Ramadan <clears throat> is just a few weeks away. Uh, and we say, Allahumma balighna Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to arrive at the month of Ramadan. May he grant us all of us, the blessings and the beauty and the bounty of this sacred month. And um, one of the hallmark features of the month of Ramadan that um, we all love is, is the communal aspect. Um, people always talk about how much they love uh, breaking their fast with their brothers and sisters, their family members, um, you know, having suhoor together, you know, late, late night or, or very early morning suhoors or um, coming together in the masjid, praying together behind a beautiful uh, qari, um, listening to the dua, saying ameen to the dua, 
there is a spirit that is generated in that in that communal dynamic. You see Eid al-Fitr, you know, Eid, what a, what a profound and momentous occasion where the Muslims come together, everyone's dressed up. And, and so there is a there's an evident beauty and uh, virtue uh, that is found in community and togetherness. And that that beauty and that virtue of community uh, is one that was self-evident throughout human history. If you look at you know a lot of just anthropological analysis of of how human beings organize themselves and how they um, uh, moved throughout societies, you'll see that they were very often oriented around the family, oriented around the tribe, oriented around um, community. You know, there was a familial orientation to society. And, you know, they, they developed concepts and ideas um, that would ensure the welfare of the individual within the context of that community. So you couldn't imagine a person, an, an individual that was had a truly robust life outside of the purview of community and family. Um, you know, the, the, you go, for example, to certain park pockets of the Muslim world, and you'll see they have the, the, the you know, uh, the concept of uh, which is, you know, the, the, the fact that you have a support structure around you. You have those that you can rely on. Al-Hamula. Al-Hamula are the people, your family and your tribe and the people around you who help carry. You know, this is very, you know, indicative language. al uh Al-Hamula. Uh, th- these are what help you. They carry you. They support you. They, they, they back you up. You know, so it was almost inconceivable that, you know, a person would raise their kid on their own because there was a, fa- a strong family network, a tribe around them that would carry that burden. You would have in societies, in, in tribal societies, a woman after giving birth would be supported by all the other members of her tribe to give her the relief that she needs so she can, her body can heal and she can, you know, uh, bring, come back to the fullness of her uh, physical, emotional state, and produce the milk that she needs to produce, etc. So, you know, the other women in the tribe would step in. The men would be continue to do the work that they're doing. But there was a real interdependent, integrated uh, system uh, of, of the individual welfare that came out of the group. And and I think that you know, as modern people, we have to uh, we have to really think about how we have come to organize and arrange ourselves as societies. Um, Because everything that we see happening today in the modern period is is a stark departure from the structure and from the framework that governed and animated the way people lived and thought for centuries. You know, we are now moving into, we we are in, and we continue to immerse further into a world of hyper-atomization, hyper individualization where we live effectively in isolation on our own you know and um you know we're 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 left to fend for ourselves we um we we develop our most of our emotions our feelings our perspectives our theologies our behaviors in isolation because we are you know there is a type of convenience that allows for that and there's also a type of advocacy for that because we are constantly encouraged to to have to live our lives the way that we want to. So you have it your way. You do everything as you want to do it. We live in the age of the hyper self, the hyper nefs, you know, um, where the nefs now dictates and governs so much of my behaviors, my dreams, my aspirations, my beliefs, my perspectives. And yeah. and when you're alone and you're indulging in yourself and your thoughts and your emotions and your feelings and your dreams for yourself. I, I want to have a paycheck that looks this way. I want to have income and have retirement. I want to have a home car. I want to have these, you know, uh, I want to have this and that. And that, that leads towards a type of self obsolescence or self-destruction in a very painful way, you know, because Prophet ﷺ says, You know, the, the, the wolf will eat from the lone sheep. Um, we are not meant to be alone. You know, we are really not meant as human beings to be in isolation. 
it is it, it it should be the exception to the rule but unfortunately now it is becoming the rule and the exception is that we have rich robust relationships i'm not talking about um you know uh friendships of convenience you know we just like to play the same game or we like to get together because we like the same indulgence or you know we just like to hang out because we like the same movies you know and or we like to play the same board games that's not the type of suhba or community or family that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the rich and robust and revolutionary orientation in society when people live in an, in an integrated, interdependent fashion where my feelings are your feelings, my emotions are your emotions, my happiness is your happiness, my sadness is your sadness. My needs are your needs. My welfare is your welfare. That economically we're interdependent. You know, healthcare, interdependent. Welfare, socially, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, we're interdependent. That my children are your children. Your children are my children, right? Uh, that happens in that integrated fashion. That's a revolutionary concept. That moves nations and tribes and people. There's a reason why the Prophet ﷺ, when he first moved, uh, when he made the migration to Medina, that he built the institution of, of Mu'akha, right? Because now in Mecca, they were a tribal, they were tribes, and they were all from the same, they were cut all from the same cloth. But now when the shift happened into, into Medina, now the world opened up, so now we have to great, gain what more intentionality. So now we have to do mu'akha. Bring the muhajirin, bring the ansar. You guys are brothers and sisters. You're one. It, was, it, fun, it practically existed in Mecca because it was already a part of the fabric. Tribal societies and so on were all from the Meccan you know, uh, space. But now we go to Medina, now we have these muhajirin. We have, we have the Qahtan, Qahtani Arabs, you know, and the different types of you know, uh, Arab uh, dispositions, we have to integrate them as a whole. It's a project, you know, bringing people from east to west into the same, into the same intentional project. That's the spirit of our of the of the life of the Prophet. ﷺ. And he takes that sallallahu alayhi wa sallam obviously from the inherited traditions, because the societies were such, but also from the explicit guidance of the Quran, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, bi habrillahi jami'a. All of you hold on to the rope of Allah collectively. Do not be disconnected or disparate. You know, Yadullahi ma'al jama'a, the aid and the support and the strength and the power of Allah is with the group. Prophet, when he talks about us, he talks about us as you know the way that we should be, Kalbunyan al Marsus, like the well-built structure where each brick pulls off of the energy of the other. You know, Yashuddu ba'duhu ba'da. You know, there is this, in, there are the force that is a mutual force between each brick. I'm pulling on you, you're pulling on me. Be malleable and lean into your one, your, into one another. That we are like one contiguous body where if one part of it is, 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 is tired, then the rest of it experiences the same tire and feverishness and pain. So our whole Quranic discourse and prophetic discourse is around the importance and the significance of coming together as one, being integrated within, within a, a strong familial, communal perspective uh, uh, orientation, that is a project, because, as we said, the wolf will eat from the from the lone sheep, but what are we seeing today? We're seeing the that it is becoming or it has now become not is becoming it is a pursuit of many people to live in isolation look at your average young person today maybe some of you are listening right now listen to me carefully a lot of young people come and say oh sheikh i just can't wait to be out there on my own i can't wait until i get to just i just want to you know live my life i want to live my life i just want to be free to do whatever it is i want to do I dream, I dream about the day when I leave my parents' house. People, young people all the time. These are not people who are living in, you know, uh, you know, the, 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 the gulag. They're not living in some underground prison. No, these are people living in a, just a, a nice, simple apartment or home. And 
like everyone else eating and drinking with a little pot belly. I just can't wait to like get out of this till I'm free of this and I can just be on my own. That's become a, a it's become a, a pursuit. It's become a desire. It's become an aspiration to be in isolation. I want to say what a disastrous development in society. That, that isolation is a pursuit. That has never been in human history a pursuit to be in isolation, to be alone, to be disconnected from your actual capital, from your actual power source, which is people around you, relationships, rich relationships, people who are invested in you. You think when you go off into college and you pursue the dream that apparently is a rite of passage now, all of these ideas, they've seeped in. Al-fitna, don't forget, al-fitna. It's very nefarious. It seeps in. Now, moving away to college is a rite of passage. To what? To misery? To loneliness? To anxiety? To depression? To living alone in a dorm? Where is the merit in that? Where is the beauty in that? There is nothing. You're just left to your own demise. Right? No one should be living alone unless they have no other choice. Because there are people listening say like, Sheikh, I live alone, but I don't really know what to do. I'm not shaming you. I'm saying I understand that we have structured society in a way, unfortunately, where there is so much isolation. There is so much loneliness. There is so much individualization. And it's to our detriment. It's not helping us. We're not better off alone. We're not better off alone with our whims and our desires and our feelings and our anxieties and our stress. We're not... We're not, we're not better off alone trying to raise our kids alone in this world of ideologies and isms and philosophies that are in contradistinction to the way of Allah and the way of our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And our children are saturated in these ideas, in these social trends, and these, in these new age belief systems, and these perspectives, very subjective perspectives on morality and goodness and bad. And our children are sitting there absorbed in this reality on their phones. Like the real sahib, the real companion of most people is this thing. That's why I have my Sheikh, Sheikh Rayyan, you know, on my phone. Because at least when I look at it, you know, I make dua for him. And I remember that the years that I spent sitting at his feet in his suhbah, in his companionship. Because I don't want to go into the phone and start going into weird little dark corners of the internet. You know, all sorts of weird spaces. And I don't mean some dark, nefarious page. No, I mean, what are you doing on social media? What are you doing on TikTok? What are you doing on Instagram? What am I actually doing on Facebook? What am I actually doing on Twitter? What am I consuming? How am I, you know, there's nothing called harmless passive entertainment. That doesn't exist. You know, people will say to me, oh shit, it's harmless. It's just passive. Like I lead such a, I have such a busy life. Well, this is my outlet. No, that's not a good outlet. That's a bad outlet. Just like you would agree that, Drinking yourself until you're blue in the face is not a good outlet. Non-Muslims agree with this. Drinking yourself blue in the face, getting yourself, you know, coked up is not a good outlet. It's not some passive thing. No, when you're sitting there consuming endless hours of mindless stuff, and this is actually now your true companion, your true friend, then then this is what you will become because the Prophet says, Al-Mar'u ala dini khalili. That you will, you will be upon the way of your khalil, the way of your friend. And if this is your friend, then this is who you're going to be. You know, just where is, where is spirituality in social media? Where is philosophy, ideas, enriching ideas? Where is real bonds and connections? Where is real support? Who supports you on TikTok or Instagram? Who helps you raise your child? Who helps you clean your baby's uh, behind when you gave a baby no one, no one, social media doesn't do that you can't even have an avatar that comes and helps you, you need someone to carry your baby so you can take a nap human beings, actual physical human beings need to do that who, who you, need, you need people next to you who, who, who call you and you call them that you strategize with around the raising of your children around the culture of your home around the routine of the week that in the span of my week I have a project that I'm invested in and it's called collectively, communally living in loving surrender to Allah and following beautifully in the footsteps of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so in the spirit of suhbah and companionship and brotherhood and sisterhood, 
knowing full well that I cannot figure this stuff out on my own because I'm just one simple individual. I'm going to now identify people around me. And alhamdulillah, as Muslims here in, in, in the U.S. or beyond, there's, you know, you can access Muslims, even if there are few or many, but you can, if you can identify Muslims, find them, knock on their door, sit them down, have coffee, have dinner, have dessert, and say, we need to figure out who we are, our project. We cannot just be passive consumers. You know, because who are the true beneficiaries of in hyper-individualization? It's not you. It's not your children. We are not better off in this hyper, hyper-atomized, hyper-individualized orientation society. You know who really benefits from this? <laughs> Big business. You know, the industry of... Of, of, of generation and consumption. Because your greatest utility when you're hyper, when you're individualized is how obsessed with earning you are and how obsessed with consumption you are. That becomes the epitome of your utility in the social sphere. Your, your emotional welfare, your social welfare, your spiritual welfare, having a support system around you that picks up, you know, having that, that izwa, that humula, that you found in tribal societies, that does not exist. No one cares about you. I'll tell you, young person who's listening to me right now, who may not be happy with me because I'm saying it's not good. I'm telling you, parents, it is a very bad idea to let your child go off to be alone at the age of 17. It's a very bad idea for them as well as for you, even if you're in your 30s or your 40s. It's not the good... It's something that should only be done when it's needed, when it's calculated, when it understood why this is happening. But just as a common trend, because big academic business says that this is something important to ship my, ch my child off into some university to be alone when no one really cares about them there. You know, their friends don't know how to care for another person their age. They can just be, uh, they can play games together and just, you know, chit chat and share a burrito or something, but they don't know how to care for one another. They're kids. And then what? The professors care about them? They don't care. It's a job. Even in whatever the manifestation of their care is always going to be infinitesimal to compare to the care of their siblings, their mother, their father, their aunts, their uncles, their cousins. That's where you are cared for. Young people, listen to me, please. Do not imagine yourself in isolation of your family, it's the most dangerous place you can be. You need to, you know, in, 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 part of the inherited wisdom of the past is that if you don't have family, you buy family. You don't have, you buy, because your capital is how many robust relationships you have. Okay, what happens? Let me just be very blunt and, 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 and I'll put, say it as it is. You go out there. You live in isolation, okay? You isolate yourself from your family. And you go into campus life and you become immersed in campus life and your career and extracurricular activities and blah, 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 right? Because we all worship, unfortunately, now at the altar of careerism. And it's just, and careerism is an individual pursuit. It's for your own personal sense of self because we have been convinced that my only true sense of self, like I will realize myself when I'm pursuing what I want to pursue, which is a, which is a false conception. It's a false notion. It's a secularized, atheistic notion. It's not one centered in the fact that, no, you can't just do anything you want in life. That's not a virtue. People say, oh, you can be anything you want. No, you can't. You can't be anything you want. You have to be what Allah wants you to be. That's virtue. All right? So when you're out there and the whims of, and now we all say, oh, my child's a good child. They're going to be okay. Well, what happens when they're saturated in those networks and those relationships and those ideas and those perspectives? Our university campuses are the most, some of the most dogmatic and ideologically driven spaces on earth today. Very particular ideas that are advocated for, that are fought for. And our children embrace them as the most virtuous of concepts and ideas. And then what happens? They get out and they go into their their careers, which is now their ultimate pursuit. And it's full force, full speed ahead. You know, they close your eyes, wake up. Ten years later, where is everyone? Well, you know, let's start thinking about marriage and how about, uh, okay, well, you know, and this and, and community. And, and it's like, it's almost as if it's like too late. Like, well, okay, where am I now? 
can, can I get married? I mean, what, 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 what did I just do for the past 10 years? What did I actually, like, okay, I pursued this pursuit because everyone around me told me that this is the epitome of accomplishment. I pursued it like with a sense of extreme purpose for 10, 15 years. And what are you left with? You tell me. I know. I've spoken to hundreds of people now, hundreds if not more of young people who've gone through this because now we've gone through a, a whole iteration of people who are now in their 40s and they started the pursuit when they were in their teens and the regret sinks in. What did I do with my life? Where are my relationships? Where are the people who love me? Where are the people who invested in me? I missed most of my parents' life. They all died off and I was, I don't know what I was doing. You know, I, I don't, I'm, I'm strange from my own siblings. I don't even know how to talk to them anymore. You go to some, you know, reunion. I don't, uh, inconceivable in human history. But now we have to just, we have to like set up reunions so we can like lay eyes in a very superficial way with our family. But now it's just a, it's like a cosmetic superficial occurrence called a reunion. Because everyone's just living out their life. You know, what an unfortunate development. Wallahi, I speak from pain and from hurt. Because I'm, I'm sad. I'm tired of watching people suffer in isolation. We don't need to be so isolated. We just need to make the decision to, to connect with our brothers and sisters. Yeah, I would love to see the ummah in the greatest sense, like more robustly connected. But inshallah, we'll get there. Bi'ithnillah. But we can do something about it. You as a Muslim, find Muslims around you. Identify them. Knock on their door. Say, can we meet? We have to meet our children. I don't know. I'm struggling with my child in X, Y, Z ways. I'm struggling with my own spirituality. I've been listening to talks about making dhikr for the past 20 years. I barely make any dhikr. And subhanAllah, when I think about it, the only time I actually make dhikr is when I'm around other Muslims because there's a dhikr session or there's a recitation of the Quran or the imam is leading taraweeh. Is it, is, why is it? You know, subhanAllah, the only time I'm really reading Qur'an or listening to Qur'an proactively is when I'm in the masjid during Ramadan and the imam is leading salah. But outside of that, it's a rare occurrence. This is not, you know, you don't have to take this as a given. This is the kind of stuff that now we have to intentionally shift and change. We then have to now identify friends, individuals, families around us. And we become very intentional, just like the intentionality of Mu'akha, the beginning of the Medinan period, we have to live together. We have to be integrated. It's not going to be easy, by the way, because unfortunately, one of the developments of this is now we don't, we, 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 we think we like to be alone. I just, people are really complicated. Um, you know, people are really complicated. It's hard to deal with people. So I'd just rather be alone. I just me, my Netflix, my delivery, you know, my food, my games, my this, uh, life is easier that way. But life is not better at all. It's not better at all that way. Why do you think so many people now just are giving up on marriage, giving up on having children? So many young people tell me, oh, why should I have a kid? Like, what's the point of bringing a kid into this world? What an unfortunate social development. Wallahi, you know, you we can have such rich, robust connections together with one another. But we now have to do this. We have to take what was common sense knowledge throughout human history. We have to bring it into reality. We have to do that. And it starts with you as you and I as individuals. So the, the, the people, because people when they hear this say, Sheikh, it such, sounds like such a big problem, but how do I resolve it? Listen, I'll close with this. And I know, I know we have to close for Q&A, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he does not burden us with more than we can handle. And what he says is, Do and Allah will see what you do. You and I know that the standard person today, all they're obsessed about, at, when you really boil it down, is their wants and their interests. You know, it's like, it's money, it's material, it's a home, it's a car, dreaming about this, dreaming about that, you know, wanting things. I have this idea of myself as a, as a accomplished X or accomplished Y, the careerism is one of the worst ideologies. Careerism is one of the worst ideologies. It's destroyed the hearts and minds of so many young people. Boys and girls have been destroyed 
by the idea of careerism, that your identity is your career. What an unfortunate development. It's very conducive and very meaningful for big business, but not for you. Brother, sister, brother, listen to me carefully. Your identity and your self-worth and your meaningfulness has nothing to do with your career. Work is something that has to be done. It's a responsibility by those who have to do it. It's not, it's not some, it's not some, uh, just because like, you know, there's magazines out there that put really nice pictures about people in wearing suits on the, and somehow this is like, you know, we've romanticized this idea of working and being independent and going out and taking the subway and being in the big city and being, and, you know, striking big deals and signing off and, and having the power of like, you know, signing a check and receiving this and you can go buy a home. It's become at the end, it's become a religion in of itself. And it's a very bad, very bad for your, your emotional, psychological, spiritual, your social welfare. It doesn't define you. Work is something you do because you have to do it. Case closed. Work does not define you in your, in your essence. In your essence, you're only to be defined by your connection to Allah and your connection to Allah's creation. You know, we serve Allah and we serve His creation. That was the prophetic reality. He lived in loving surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was a mercy to all of the world. He served people. The best of you are the, those who bring the most benefit to people. How much you love people. How much you care about people. How much you're invested in people. That's your true worth. How many, how many people you really help. Not because of some also very <laughs> convenient uh, materialized notion of like, well, I'm going to make a lot of money and therefore I'm going to be very helpful. <laughs> Don't fool yourself, please. Plenty of money. In the modern world, you know how much money we generate? You know how much disposable income we have as Americans? We have the equivalent of multiple countries' GDP. What are we doing with all this excess wealth? Nothing. We're doing nothing meaningful with it other than expanding our homes and building bigger homes and paying more taxes. You know, so I am... I am saying you can break out of this status quo through your intentionality. Your actions are by your intentions. Change the framework. Change your, what you are actually concerned about, what your objectives in life are. Identify brothers and sisters around you who will be of like mind that you can come together with in your home, in your apartment, in your friend's home, in your sister's home. Come together. Have weekly gatherings, right? Listen to the, 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 the Friday reminders. Reflect upon them. Turn them into projects and initiatives. You know, don't just have dead weekends where you're killing time. No, no, no. Come together. Take your children with other children and go out. I'll never forget. As someone who was born and raised in this country, I'll never forget one of the local um, doctors here who, mashallah, was extremely busy man, had three but he always made the time that every Saturday morning he would gather a bunch of us as young people and take us out for football and bagels every Saturday morning. And I'll never forget that. This, and that was 30 years ago, and I'll never forget it. That he invested his time into us and his children were there because the, the outcome was of great utility to his children and to us because we had someone who cared about us who brought us together. Now we, we, want, we want everything to be resolved by the president, by the board, by the whatever. People, those people do not resolve your day-to-day -day problems. You resolve your problems through your investments and in how you spend your time. We, and we do have, for the most part, a lot of leeway to make the right investments, to change the trajectory of our lives. If, if what's taking up so much time is your job, rethink it. Maybe you need to quit your job. Maybe you need to find a different job. Maybe you need to scale down on your lifestyle. Maybe you don't need that mortgage. Maybe you don't need that car payment. Maybe you need a simple used car and a nice simple apartment so you can invest your time. You, don't, you, don't, you, should, not be, you should not be paying people to raise your children. Nannies should not be raising our kids. Teachers at school should not be raising our children. These are just tools that we may use for some support, you know, but it's thoughtful. I have a plan, a project for my children that this is how they're being developed. Their values, their morals, their ideals, their spirit, their hearts, how they're nourished. What are they hearing? What are they seeing? What are the, what are the ideas that my children are saturated in? That's a project that requires real strategy, real strategy. You can't be passive. 
Don't get caught up into this narrative. It's all about getting your kid into the right school. No, it's not. You know, people obsess and they'll compete and then waiting list because, yeah, I just need to get them into this school because if they get into this school, they're going to accomplish that. Accomplish what? Accomplish what exactly? Financial success? So what? How? So many of you sitting here will say, will, will attest to the fact that, yeah, yeah, no, no, <laughs> yeah, that was a miscalculation because here, my child is X, but look at where they are. My husband, look at where he is. My wife, look at where she is. My daughter, I can't even talk to her. I don't, know, I don't even know how to communicate with her anymore. The costs are real. The costs are very real. I apologize for going a little over time. Um, but inshallah, we'll, uh, I hope that we understand that at, at the very least, this is something to trigger our hearts and minds into thinking a little bit more scrupulously. I'm not here to shame or blame anyone or attack anyone. Wallahi. I'm not someone who's anti the world and anti modernity. No, I'm just, we have to be thoughtful. We have to be critical. We have to be scrupulous. We have to use our fa our, the capacity for ourselves to think and then act upon our thoughts to then generate a whole alter alternate reality for ourselves. And that's very doable. Bifadillahi ta'ala. By his aid and his support. Because when you turn to Allah, he turns to you and he supports you and he gives you. He opens up. Subhanallah. Bifadlihi wa bikarami. He's so generous and so kind. Bifadlillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq to do that which is pleasing to him. May Allah orient our hearts and our minds and our children's hearts and our minds around that which is pleasing to him. May Allah grant us righteous companionship. Like suhba saliha tayyiba that we can connect with and bond with brothers and sisters that we can really unite around that we are every single day of our lives is rich because of the bonds we have ya rab wallahi what a beautiful life no more isolation no more loneliness i have people that we're living interdependent i'm no longer raising my kids on my own because now i have you know an army of aunts and uncles from that that are by, you know that are that are actually from my own blood, but then from what is more powerful than blood than from my own, you know, spiritual reality that are together with me, helping with my children. I no longer have to struggle about like thinking about my child in terms of phone consumption because now we have a network of five, six, ten families and we all have the same standards. So this is what we do around, you know, phone consumption. This is what we're going to talk about in terms of hijab. So our daughters are not feeling like they're alone trying to like battle the struggle, but now we have a network of sisters where everyone's wearing their hijab and we, we, we make it as a part of our identity and our, our daily prayers and our fasts, our beliefs, our perspectives, our opinions about what we're watching and hearing on TV, that we have opinions. No, 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 that's not okay. Just because it's a social trend, just because it seems to be the compassionate thing to just accept this or be okay with this. No, 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 no. That's not a good thing. You know why it's not a good thing? Because Allah did not say we should do that. Allah said the exact opposite. And we begin to build and fortify our theologies, our spiritualities. You know, that we really have good, healthy, loving company. That I have other Muslims who make dua for me because they love me and care about me. Just like I will make dua for you and love you and be you be, you be cared for. We're just gonna, You know, I feel like, subhanAllah, and I know I'm rambling on now, but I feel like we're leaving so much on the table because of these unfortunate lifestyles that we've standardized. Hyper-individualized lifestyles. Who's happy? You tell me. Who's genuinely happy, content? sitting there on the couch alone watching endless movies. Who's happy doing that? Who's content? Who's nourished? People literally do that stuff because I just need to kill time because I don't even know what to do with my time. So let me kill it. A'udhu billah. Like, subhanAllah, what an... You know, is this what the, the modern developed world has created for us? That now I'm so sick of time that I'm just trying to kill it? I just want to kill time, so I play. That's Isn't that the language we use? I need to kill it because it's such a burden. Time is a burden. <laughs> Subhanallah. May Allah protect us and help us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Barakallahu feekum. Zaykumullah khair. I apologize. Inshallah, I don't know who's here to, <laughs> to, to take over. <laughs> oh, it's still me. <laughs> Subhanallah. <laughs> yeah, and... Um... 
it's yeah it's clear from i don't know if you've had a chance to see any of the chats that have come in but it's no, clear that the, <laughs> what you've said is really really resonating with people um i i like i'm so over i can't even pick one to put on the screen because there's just so many people you know no worries, sharing yeah. how no much how much they really needed this advice today subhanallah yeah. um so we'll get into q a we'll have time um on on the the youtube lot in facebook live session we'll have time to ask a couple of questions um inshallah and then and then we'll move over to clubhouse um and so if you if you're wanting to ask a question um you can either post your um, post your question in the comments um, in the chat and we'll collect those or if you would prefer your question to be anonymous um you can email info at celebrate mercy.com um and then Sheikh, i'm wondering if we could bring you back on um to like uh, really quickly before q a to make a dua um i'm not sure if you're if you're ready to okay i'll add you back to the stream mm -hmm. um but yeah, Sheikh, um, we announced early in, in the program that we're making du'a for one of our team members whose mother passed away a few weeks ago. Wow. Um, and I, we're wondering if maybe we can make a du'a for, for yeah. her and her family, inshallah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant our dear sister the highest levels of Jannah to be in the company of Al-Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala embellish her with all of his grace and his blessings and his mercies and his forgiveness and his beauty. Ya Allah, Ya Kareem, we ask you to accept her as your humble servants. We ask you to allow her to be uh, amongst the elect in the company of those who testify that La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. Ya Allah, <coughs> forgive her sins and her shortcomings and her weaknesses and cleanse her of all of that which you do not like and only beautify her with the most beautiful of gifts and mercies and acceptance. Ya Allah, Rida, we ask you to be radi anha, to be content and pleased with her as your humble servant. Ya Allah, we ask you to have mercy upon all of our deceased, all of our loved ones, to elevate their ranks, to accept them as your humble servants and to allow us to be in their company and to allow us to be elevated with them. Ya Allah, Ya Karim, to grant shifa to those who are ill. Ya Allah, many of us are struggling with all sorts of illnesses internal and external we ask you allah to to relieve us of our illnesses and to beautify us through the beauty of the quran and the beauty of muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman i mean i mean and um just as a reminder to we are um collecting pledges to re recite quran for for sister isa um so you can you can sign up for, and, and pledge to read at bit.ly slash quran for isa inshallah um so now um i'll leave that up for a moment um now sheikh i think we'll get into some of the of, of the questions that people have asked um we'll ask there's so many beautiful questions um and i think i think it's it's uh, kind of an interesting time um because you know we're coming off of our we've been for now a few years you know situated in in the pandemic right um and so isolation was kind of a mandate um in a lot of ways and and so i think uh it, someone someone asked a question about how to balance you know kind of some precautions with with you know this need to to kind of have this communal interdependence um but then to like how can we make the most of this moment um of like having to reflect in this isolation to now re-establish community and i know you i know you went into some guidance um but I, i'm wondering if maybe yeah, i'll, I'll share some thoughts to that i mean um hopefully very quickly um first off i would say that you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills realities, then we are under the um, the behest of the divine will. So we, we surrender to Allah's uh, will and his decree. If Allah made it, and we I think we had many talks about the spirituality and the theology of that time period, especially when we were really, really under lockdown. I think today the circumstance has changed quite extensively. Inshallah only continues to, um, you know, uh, allow us to not just get back to normal, but to a, a place far better than what is normal. I've said many times, don't make dua that we come back to normal. Make that dua that we come to a reality that's far better than what is normal. Allahumma ameen ya rabbil um, But it's it's important to note that, you know, when it is willed that we are in a type of isolation, then you use that as a time 
to really connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a manner that is only accessible to those who have been dispossessed of means. Ibn Ata'illah talks about this um, in his hikam, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes you mujarrad, when he makes you dispossessed of means, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is opening up a gateway for you to connect to him through dhikr and fikr, through uh, remembrance and thought and contemplation. And, and that only happens when you're truly dispossessed of others even. So <clears throat> that's a, 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 a critical window that is to be negotiated. But simultaneously, especially with the practical means that we have today, I would say that we should, and I think for many, we try to, and we struggle to utilize these new means like, you know, the Zoom culture and uh, stream yarding and, uh, you know, WhatsApp and, and, and family kind of Zoom calls and WhatsApp calls and all this kind of stuff to connect and to, to, to connect and to be abound with others. Uh, we could have done a far more uh, a better job of, of the intentionality rather than just Zoom being used for work and school. It could have been really been used for us to connect with others on a daily basis, you know, to have, um, you know, to have a plug into our networks, to be working, for example, on the completion of reading a book, of making a dhikr together through um, our virtual means, um, you know, to read the shama'il together, to... Uh, to check up on one another, to give nasiha to one another, to invite people to come and talk to us about something they know, to learn a new craft, a new skill set. Um, you know, there's so much that can be done, alhamdulillah. And, you know, once again, I, you know, th this problem I know is much bigger than the individual, but I'm referring to what you can do on the individual capacity. So with the people that are around you that you can connect with. Don't underestimate how significant that shift is when you plug yourself into a few people around you. Um, and now, inshallah, hopefully we can, you know, kind of leave the virtual space behind, <laughs> hopefully, and come more into, not wholly, you can't leave it, we're not going to leave it completely, but we're going to, you know, far be, be far more immersed in, in, in friendships and relationships and real people. Um, and you really have to learn to get out of your way, get out of your own way. And create the relevant, the requisite space to make those things, right? Yeah, but if you leave yourself, you know, people say COVID was really bad for me or COVID, I really suffered. And many people suffered uh, exponentially. A lot of relationships suffered. A lot of families suffered. A lot of uh, uh, individuals suffered. Why? Because, yeah, when you're left alone to your own demise with no new governing ideas, perspectives, projects, activities, then it's only going to be increasingly deleterious. Because, you know, for some people, alhamdulillah, you know, isolation uh, w with intentionality led to a certain type of growth. But for others, unfortunately, isolation without intentionality led to greater destruction, greater pain. Um, many people said, like, oh, we just realized how much we actually didn't like each other. Before, we were just so busy with our careers. We didn't really, you know, it wasn't either here nor there. But then I realized, like, wow, this person, I don't really like their character. I, 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 you know, so busy consumed in myself, I didn't really, and so we, we're not, even, you know, how much are we actually investing in our relationships, our bonds, our connections? Why is everyone just trying to run away from each other? You know, okay, 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 okay just, let me just get on my phone. Okay, I don't, want, I don't want to talk anymore. You know, just jump on my phone. Can't even like tolerate to listen to one another. So, um, so what I'm referring to requires a lot of intentionality. And it's not the duty of the president or the king or the, you know, the leaders, the proverbial leaders. We're not, we, you, everyone needs to stop waiting for Sayyidina Umar ibn Abdul Aziz to come on horseback and save the ummah. No, no, you, you. Prophet says, be keen on that which is of benefit to you. That's what we need to focus on, inshallah. Allah. Jazakallah khair. Um, yeah, and I, I, ask that question on the tail end because i know also too there are so many people who struggle with just isolation and in, in general like you know because they have no other choice they might have converted and are in you know kind of a small community so i think some of those um relics of the 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 height of, of that time might be also useful yeah. um no, no i mean and that's a, that's listen there's no doubt like i i don't want anyone to think because you're in isolation that i'm somehow shaming you wallahi i'm not and i hope that's very clear I am sympathizing and I'm empathizing with the pain that people are experiencing in isolation because people, the response that some will say, and I've heard, I've had many, 
I've had countless conversations on the topic where people say, well, Sheikh, like, you know, no one's embraced me into the community. And, you know, I said, I, I, I gave a talk recently where I said to people, don't assume that people are having rich, robust relationships the way you think. There's a lot of, it, it, a lot of it looks nice, you know, because they posted a really nice picture online. <laughs> You know, and this looked like some big, massive, beautiful gathering. But how meaningful was it for those people? You know, I, I would challenge and I would say, brother or sister who's sitting alone listening and, you know, take it upon yourself to invite people into your lives, to connect with them. Don't wait for someone to invite you because we're losing that social muscle as it is. Like we, we, we're, we're, we're slowly losing the capacity to know how to invite someone into our home. A lot of people are very, you know, uh, skittish about, I, I just don't really know, like maybe just kind of play it safe and not, you know, I said, I want to come in the masjid is sufficient or like in the, in, in some conference or in the supermarket, but into my home, I don't really know them that well. Well, get to know them well. You know, <laughs> get to, you, can, you can break that like mystery. <laughs> you can shatter that mystery. I welcome them into your home. You know, uh, you know, What's, what's the worst that's going to happen? You may not, you know, be excited. Just open, open, open your doors. Be open. Prophet you know, one of the beautiful things that he would do in his shama'il, in his akhlaq, in his disposition, he would say, kathirul ayadi, bring more hands into your plate. You know, don't eat alone. Bring hands into your plate. Share food. There's barakah in that. The more hands, the more barakah. I, I'll tell you, I... You know, pe people, even a lot of these travel vloggers, I've seen a few of them say this thing, like the most generous people are people in the Muslim world. You go anywhere, it's like, oh, come into my house and here's a lamb, okay? And here's a big vat of rice. Just put your hands and let's eat together. I can't tell you how many times I've been to different parts of the Muslim world. And the person, I'll walk into their house and they'll have a small little pot of rice and a few, you know, some vegetables, some stew, some whatever. You have like 20 people eating. And wallahi, wallahi, I can't tell you how many times everyone got up eating to their fill, just feeling that was the best meal I've ever had. And it's the barakah. This is what we lose sight of. There's, there's a concept called barakah, divine blessing. It's infused because yadullahi ma'al jama'ah, the aid and the support and the blessing of Allah is with the group. You put more hands, you'll find more blessings. Invite more people into your home. You'll find more blessings in your home. Many of us have homes and apartments and, and nice spaces to live in, but we don't feel barakah, we don't feel sakina, invite people into your home, bring more hands, feed more people, fill bellies, <laughs> you know, give gifts, tahadu, tahabu. There was a beautiful, Sheikh Suhail Lahir's father, Justice Ismail Lahir, rahimahullah, he would go to his small apartment in an apartment complex in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and the door was open, and he died in his, in his late 90s, door was always open, Muslim, non-Muslim, neighbors coming in, and no one would leave without a gift. Wallahi alim he would have the smallest gifts. I want to find you something. He, I have like 40 gifts from him. A pen, a miswak, uh, a, 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 a small dua note. I have so many small notes with dua with his name on it. Gifts, 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 gifts. He, if you were about to leave his house, he'd say, it's okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. And he'd look around like this, and he'd find... Okay, okay, here's this. Please take it with you. Subhanallah. And he generated so much love in the people's hearts through his small apartment in Cambridge, Mass. Wallahi alabi. My testimony to him. The amount of people who just said, oh my God, I love him. Because he was so loving. He would tell me, he would say, Shaykh, wallahi, in my dua, in my sujood, my number one dua, oh Allah, guide the Muslims in and the non-Muslims, love them, ya Allah, bring them into Islam. They, he loved people, love people. Love them, Wallahi, love them. And bring them into your home, invite them, be proactive. If they don't respond once, twice, 20 times, you know what you do? You invite them 20 times, you invite them 30 times. You never give up, even if your, your, your ego's hurt. I mean, how many times do we invite them? Invite them 100 times. Maybe 101, they'll break. They'll say, I'm sorry that I ignored you 100 times. It was, I needed 101 invitations to, to, to come out of my, my cocoon, come out of my skepticism, to come out of my doubts, to come out of myself. A lot of times people think that they're, you know, and I'm, I'm sorry for rambling on, but hopefully this is resolving a lot of questions that are being asked. A lot of times people say, well, like, Sheikh, you know, that person, they're not very inviting, they're not very welcoming. 99% of the time it has nothing to do with you, it has something to do with them. They're in their head. 
most of us are in our heads. We're in our emotions. Most of us say no to other people's things because I just don't want to be around people. I'm depressed. I, I, I'd rather just be alone. I'm uncomfortable. I don't want to show myself. I don't have anything to show. I don't really want to show. I don't want to have to negotiate questions. I just rather isolate myself. Now, some people take it as a slight, like, who does this person think they are? Why are they so this? Maybe they're just taxing their own stuff. And so what they really need is they need so much unconditional love for you, from you, until you pull them out of their darkness. You have to be a man and a woman on a mission to say, I, I want to love people in a way that they've never experienced love. I'm going to shower them with love. I, I, this is an aspiration of mine. I'm not claiming that I'm the opinion. I wish that Allah increases me in my capacity to do so much more. But this has to become a mission of yours. You have sympathy and love for people. Allah's al-wadud. He's the one who loves unconditionally. You sin and you and I sin against Allah a million times over. But from his unconditional love, he opens up doors for you to come back. And Ramadan is around the corner. It's a door. Allahu balighna Ramadan, ya Rabb, and all of our loved ones. It's a door where everything that you've done wrong can be erased. It's how loving and open and caring and inviting he is. We have to be the same way with each other. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah, subhanallah. I, um, there are so many beautiful questions have been asked, and I think in your answers you've given such comprehensive um, reflections that they've they've taken care of a lot. But there's still a lot on, um, yeah, on the on the table. Um, and and kind of with the, the end of what you just said, I think some people were wondering about, um, you know, kind of when relationships aren't so healthy and how to um, how to strengthen them. And I'm, I'm thinking maybe that's a discussion we can take to Clubhouse. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. Okay. Something we can take there and, and okay. Subhanallah. Okay. okay. Um, so we'll see. We'll see you, inshallah, on Clubhouse. I'm going um, to jump on right now. So everyone's ahna wa welcome to Clubhouse. Okay. <laughs> subhanallah. And um, we'll... Yeah. we'll <laughs> subhanallah. Barakallahu feekum. Zakallah khair, Xavier. I appreciate your work. And I miss you. I'm seeing you in person. I miss you. Yeah, I'm yeah. <laughs> inshallah soon. Again, soon inshallah. Are you well? Are you in? Are you in? Are you in, are you in, are you in Massachusetts or where are you? Yeah, yeah. I'm in. Yeah. I'm in Boston. It's the beginning of our spring break. Subhanallah. So. Well, it's great seeing you. Give my salam to all the loved ones. Oh, they'll be happy to hear from yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So, um, before we move to Clubhouse, we want to make sure uh, we want to do the giveaway really quickly. Um, for for the book um, from Mecca to Medina, and I don't know if um, okay, it looks like the wheel is coming up. So, um, inshallah, well, without further ado, we'll give it a spin and see who who our our winner is. <laughs> mashallah, mashallah. So there's our winner. Um, if if you uh, if that if that is you and you're watching, um, go ahead and message us on on Instagram, and we will we will get your book out to you. Congratulations, Subhanallah, Mashallah, that you that you've gotten this beautiful book. I'm I'm happy <laughs> to see um, to see this go to someone. Um, Subhanallah. So congratulations to you. Um, message us, and, and we'll get that to you. Inshallah. Um, so we have spent um, our our afternoon with Sheikh Yasser Fahmi, um, and and that's uh, you can follow him um, his prophetic living initiative. Um, as mentioned before, we're going to move the conversation to Clubhouse. Um, you can access that room. Um, just go to celebratemercy.com slash room. And I, and I know a lot of people had questions um, that maybe didn't get answered or are wanting to. Um, extend the discussion a little further. So, so join us on Clubhouse. It's it's always lovely to hear from you guys. Um, and before we do that, I'll just um, re read a sh couple short announcements, um, and then and then we'll move over there, inshallah. So, if you if you'd like to sponsor a Friday gems, you can email info at celebratemercy.com. Um, if you're if um, if you're interested in checking out our Black Lives Around the Messenger course, there's still an opportunity to do that. The live course was um, in in the middle of February, but um, you can still uh, register for the course at celebratemercy.com/bl and watch those recordings. It was just a beautiful, beautiful course. Um, so inshallah, you can you can check that out there. Um, also, we are hiring. If you would like to work for Celebrate Mercy, um, you can check out uh, the the jobs we have posted at celebratemercy.com/careers. Inshallah, 
Um, and as I've mentioned, uh, you all are are really what sustains this community by showing up, by being with us, and then um, also through your donations. So you can give a one-time donation or a monthly donation at celebratemercy.com slash donate. Um, this, this is what we've been doing since um, since COVID-19 hit in March 2020. Um, and so when when you're giving when you're when you're going to celebrate mercy.com slash donate, you're sustaining this programming. Um, and and we're just really grateful to to you for that. Um, and you can also donate cryptocurrency <laughs> if that's if that's your thing. Um, and I already told you all about that. Um, but also if you if you shop on Amazon, um, you can go to instead of going to amazon.com to do your shopping you can go to smile.amazon.com and select celebrate mercy as your chosen charity um and a little bit of your purchase will then automatically support us so that's one way you can help out a little bit um just through what you're you know the shopping that you're already doing inshallah and then i just want to remind everyone one more time about the fawake program um 15 month arabic journey from june 2022 to august 22 23. Um, there are two levels of Arabic and almost a $900 discount for viewers of Celebrate Mercy webinars. Um, so you can check that program out at fawake.org slash mercy. this beautiful Quranic Arabic course, and you can get um, a really, really generous discount with the code CMercy35, inshallah. So with that, we will go ahead and move to Clubhouse. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jum'a mubarak. It's been lovely to be with you, and I'll see you soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.